Marcus is my friend. That's what I told everyone who asked me if I knew him. Do you know Marcus? I always recognize a little undertone when someone asks me that question. A questioning undertone, of course, but different from only being interested in the pure fact whether I knew him or not. Maybe a disbelieving undertone. An undertone which subconsciously told me that my opposite was surprised that I knew Marcus. How much surprised, however, I can't tell you. I'm not very good at judging these things. It's possible that there even wasn't any surprise in these people voices who asked me about Marcus and that I only imagine hearing it now that I write down those thoughts. Marcus is my friend, I said then. The others looked at me for a moment. Maybe like they didn't really know whether they should believe that or not. Maybe like they were astonished. And again, I wouldn't be able to tell you why. Was it so unusual that I knew him? Was it so unusual that I was his friend? This sort of reaction never stopped, no matter how many people I met who had known Marcus aside from me. Even with those who already knew my answer. I met Marcus quite often. Not as often as one sees his family, his wife, children, colleagues, clubmates or the cashier woman at the supermarket, but Marcus sure was a busy man. I can't quite remember what he did for a living, but I recall that he must have been traveling a lot. Nevertheless, our conversations were always very pleasant and amicable. I always had the feeling of intense talking. I usually met him on the street in front of a pharmacy. I just might have bought medicine for the kids and as I left the building I ran into him. Hello, Marcus, I greeted him and waved. How are you, old friend? He looked at me, smiling, and shook his head, laughing, as if he couldn't believe to meet me just here. Then he reached me his hand before he replied, Fine, thanks. And you? I always told him about my family, that the children had already gotten their teeth, how my wife tried to get rid of the weight she gained during pregnancy, the worries I had about my mother because a lot of small health problems troubled her in a high age and everything else I could report of current events. That's nice to hear, he said then. Or, I'm sorry if it had been bad news. How's work? I wanted to know. Well, everything's fine, he answered. And yours? Through my young days and also during my later parts of life, I had done all kinds of labor. Sometimes I had been trained to do them, sometimes I had not. The situation on the job market had never looked good for people like me, and so I earned my money wherever possible, and for as long as I could. Having had so much change in life, I always had a lot to tell. Sometimes two different jobs lay between our meetings, so I informed him about everything new, and he listened interested. After we had approved each other, I started back for my sweet home and saw Marcus just vanishing inside the pharmacy, until our next meeting at a likewise place. Two years ago, in the winter shortly before Christmas, I met Marcus in Mew, near the traffic lights in front of the pharmacy. I had gotten a bottle of cough syrup for my wife and was already on my way back when I saw him on the other side of the street and waved. I hadn't almost recognized him. He was completely dressed in black, thick clothes, wearing a dark woolen hat which covered his head in such an extent that you couldn't discover any hair on it. He had obviously had it cut very short and looked down on the snow-white pavement his body in a crooked posture. As he was hearing my voice, he looked up and waved back. When the lights turned green, I stayed where I was, waiting for him to come over, and gave him my hand while he was giving me his in a mitten. Hello, Marcus, I said. How are you, old friend? Fine, thanks, he replied, raised his hand in front of his mouth and coughed strongly. <laughs> and you? I told Marcus about our upcoming Christmas celebration, my first within the Catholic family circle and all the stress that came along with it. But also how excited the kids had already been. Unfortunately, my wife was pretty ill at that time, like him obviously, but we all hoped the cough syrup I just had bought inside the pharmacy would help her. Marcus coughed anew. Well, you should try that one too, I advised him. Marcus smiled and waved aside. Do we want to meet during the holidays, I asked him. He looked at me for a moment, confused. When I come to think of it today, it was the same facial expression I could have read within the mimic of all the other people when I had told them about my friendship with Marcus. Then he seemed to think about it shortly before I answered. If you had just asked me earlier, he shook his head. I'm gone after Christmas. Oh, too bad, I said. We said goodbye and headed our ways. It was the last time I saw him alive. 
I had not gotten an invitation to his funeral. Instead of that, I had read about his death in the newspaper and had seen the date of his burial in the announcement part. I told my wife about it. At first she was touched that I had lost a friend, but her face darkened as she looked at the announcement. He's lucky he got his grave on the municipal graveyard. On our churchyard, he wouldn't have found his peace. When the day came, I went to the graveyard. I was irritated. No people were standing at Marcus's grave. Neither mother nor father, neither brother nor sister, no friends, no family. I stepped up to the hole and stared at the casket which was attached to a device that would lower it into the grave every minute. Just a moment later I noticed steps on the grit behind me and turned around. Are you also here for Marcus's funeral? The man who was closing in asked me. I hesitated for a short moment and eyed him. Yes, I said then. Marcus is... He was my friend. I looked at him, the same facial expression like all the others before. He was mine too, he was smiling at me. After it had been done, the stranger invited me into an empty cafe and started talking about Marcus. About a lot of things. How Marcus had been like, what he had done in his life, what he had been interested in, whom he had loved and many more things I can't remember anymore. I only know one thing for certain. Suddenly, I started to weep bitterly, and I just couldn't stop.